You're watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. From Toronto, Ontario, I'm Sameh Sayed. Welcome to the show. Now, coming up very shortly is an interview with Sister Farida Mohammed regarding Bill 96 and its effect on the educational sector. But first, let's take a look at the headlines. Indigenous leaders concerned about the lack of coordination over the Pope's visit. Ontario sees low count of monkeypox cases. Palestinian Canadian Congress alleges anti-Palestinian racism. U.S.-backed YPG recruited 221 child soldiers in Syria. And now the details. The Federation of Sovereign Indigenous Nations, or FSIN, which represents Saskatchewan's 74 First Nations, said yesterday that there was no consultation regarding the Pope's upcoming visit to Canada. Pope Francis will visit Canada in the last week of this month, which stops at Quebec, Edmonton, and Iqaluit. His visit will help in healing and reconciliation of the members of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people harmed by the Catholic-run residential schools. Chief of SSIN Bobby Cameron stated in the media release that the Canadian government and the Canadian Conference of Catholic Bishops were deciding on the attendees for the papal visit. The chief said that the absence of dialogue between the parties was, quote, deeply concerning. Chief Medical Officer of Health Dr. Kieran Moore says that Ontario is not seeing an alarming growth of the monkeypox virus. The chief stated that the province would, however, continue to see cases of monkeypox for, quote, many, many months because it takes two to four weeks for the symptoms to go away. As of July 6, there are 133 reported cases of monkeypox in Ontario. All of the cases are of men aged between 20 and 65. The majority of these cases are from Toronto. The remaining cases are in the vicinity of the city. Public Health Ontario reported 33 cases at the end of last month. The Palestinian Canadian Congress stated Monday that it had filed a claim of discrimination against Palestinian students in Ontario schools with the Human Rights Tribunal of Ontario. The claim alleges that the Ministry of Education and two Ontario school boards removed a video by a student of Palestinian origin highlighting the hardships faced by the Palestinians living under the Israeli-occupied regime. According to the press release, this act of suppression is a form of anti-Palestinian racism and is hurtful to the Canadian-Palestinian community. The claim filed with the assistance of the Legal Centre for Palestine addresses Congress the Ministry of Education, the Simcoe District School Board, and the ottawa Carleton District School Board as parties. According to a UN report released Monday, the YPG, a democratic socialist organization, continued to recruit child soldiers last year in northern Syria. The group, which rebranded itself as the Syrian Democratic Forces, backed by the U.S. and Western nations, recruited 221 child soldiers said the annual Children and Armed Conflict report by UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres. The report covers the period from January to December 2021 and lists parties that engage in the recruitment, killing, and maiming of children, along with sexual violence against minors. The report also said another branch of the YPG, the Internal Security Forces, recruited 24 children as soldiers in northern and eastern Syria. That's it for the news. Now, Bill 96 became law in Quebec in June. It is quite a sweeping legislation that was proposed to supposedly protect the French language and culture. Boiled down, though, this means that most government services would be provided almost entirely in French. Joining us now is Sister Farida Mohammed, the president of the Canadian Council of Muslim Women Montreal, to speak to us about the bill's effect on the educational sector. Welcome to the show, Sister Farida. It's great to have you join us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure for me to be with you. Sister Farida, although the bill was passed into law quite recently, many of its aspects still remain very unclear, education being one of them. Can you begin by telling us the effect Bill, 20, bill 96 would have on the educational sector? Yes, uh, um, Bill 96 has quite an impact on the Anglophone uh, school boards because now they all have to offer three core courses in French. As, I, uh, as you may know, that all schools in Quebec, including the English speaking ones, have to offer French as a second language. But now they also have to offer three 
core courses in French. It's almost like a French immersion system that's being imposed on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Anglophone school boards obviously are not happy about that because they want to offer education in the language of a minority. And in this case, we're talking about the English minority. Um, we know that this is still a minority being educated in English because the majority of students who are immigrants actually have to join the French school system. They do not have any choice on that matter. Mm -hmm. Now, more so than the uh, just the English, it's been reported that the indigenous and immigrant children are also being put at a disadvantage. How so? Well, yes, if you look at the Mohawk population who live in uh, uh, Kanasetake, Kanawake, Oka, a lot of them are English speaking and therefore would go to English speaking schools. And now they will be forced also to take these three French uh, uh, cor core courses in French, if you will. And uh, not only the Mohawk population that who will be affected uh, close to Montreal, but there are also some Cree populations who actually operate mostly in English. They do have English schools in the uh, Cree uh, uh, regions, which is north of Montreal, actually. They have the French school system and the English school system uh, in the Cree population. They will be affected as well because they may have to follow um, the Bill 96, which is really coming into effect really soon. It's already passed mm -hmm. into law and uh, it will take effect, I think, uh, from uh, end of August to 1st of September 2020. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the worries that you're hearing from parents or even the kids in school of these indigenous uh, people and immigrants in reaction to Bill 96? Well, the immigrants, uh, a quick uh, thing about immigrants is that immigrant students come here speaking their language uh, of origin. And also a lot of them know a little bit of English because as you know, the internet is, uh, most of the content is in English. And those kids are used to surfing the internet, uh, seeing content in English, using social media in English. And so they have a basic knowledge of English. When they come over, they are placed in uh, accueil, welcome classes, which uh, teach them in, uh, French for two years. Now, the Quebec government with this Bill 96 as well want to, uh, wants to actually keep them like six months in Accueil and make them move on to uh, a regular class, which will be very difficult for these uh, immigrant kids. On top of it, uh, forget about immigrant kids. We have in the West End of Montreal, most of the children who are born here, whose parents are born here, who have been here for many generations, still speak English during break time uh, with their friends. Um, they speak English all the time in the corridors of the schools, in the recreational uh, parts of the school. And uh, the administration is always telling them to use French, but it falls on deaf ears because again, as I say, a lot of young people use English because this is the medium used uh, on the internet and on social mm -hmm. media. So as and, you said, it's not just the immigrants and the indigenous, of course, it's affecting all English speaking people. Now, in order to work their way around the bill, many private schools in particular are introducing a grade 12 program. How does this go around the bill? Well, I haven't heard about the grade 12 program. Uh, if you're talking about maybe the Anglophone school system, the reason is because that the one of the reasons may be because as you know, the CEGEPs also are being affected, the colleges. Now, a lot in Quebec, there's a history of the kids, whether they go to French school or English school, a lot of the students enroll in English speaking CEGEPs mm -hmm. and much to the detriment of the French CEGEPs, obviously. So the government has decided to cut funding, actually, to some of the English uh, speaking CEGEPs. Uh, boost funding towards the French uh, CEGEPs. The kids enroll, whether they're French speaking or not, a lot of them enroll, as I mentioned, in English speaking CEGEPs, and the government is trying to curb that. Now, as you may know, uh, Dawson College is the latest victim of Bill 96. It was scheduled to do renovations, to do new additions to existing buildings, or actually to 
create uh, more buildings because its enrollment is sky high and uh, it offers many different uh, programs and courses. And the government this year, earlier this year, decided to just cut the funding, remove it and saying it does not need to fund English CEGEPs more than it should. That money should go towards French CEGEPs. And so it's told Dawson, if you need more space, you just go out and rent the space rather than us giving you money to create the framework for more space. Yes, now when asked about these loopholes in Bill 96 or about the grade 12 programs uh, specifically, the education minister, Jean-Francois Roberge, previously told media sources that the government would, quote, not tolerate the circumvention of the French language charter. Do you think then any loopholes that surround Bill 96 would, how far is the government willing to go to fill in those loopholes? The government uh, uh, can cut funding, for example, to Anglophone school boards if they do not follow the, the Bill 96 rulings. I mean, Bill 96 means that not only do the school boards have to offer three core courses in French, but they also have to do all their communication as well in French. They may have to hire people to, uh, to do that. I, but uh, as you know, I don't know if you've heard that the English Montreal School Board is already fi filing a lawsuit against Bill 96. I don't know whether they'll be successful. I mean, many uh, organizations have tried also to, including the school boards, to file a lawsuit against Bill 21 and have not succeeded in the past. And I have a feeling they may not succeed with Bill 96 because the main goal of Bill 96 is that the whole civil administration of Quebec uh, be conducted in French only. Mm -hmm. Now, after this law was passed, many speculated and even still believe that Bill 96 will lead to a brain drain in the province. This is essentially where people that are seeking higher education or higher level jobs will leave Quebec to find work or education elsewhere. Do you think this will be the case soon? It's happening already. So basically there are... Um, teachers, for example, Bill 91 has caused the exodus of some of the teachers. Bill 96 will also happen, will make that happen. In, what, in which sense? Well, uh, students will insist on being uh, uh, educated in English, especially at the college and university level. And uh, then uh, if um, they find either lucrative positions abroad, uh, outside of the province of Quebec, in other provinces of Canada or in the United States, they will move on. I mean, uh, the youth nowadays, uh, they do respect the French language and everything, but they do not have this attachment. They're more based towards multiculturalism. And our Quebec government, I think, is trying to integrate rather than accept and they keep on embracing multiculturalism. They think they have to change the way things are done and therefore integrate the immigrant population and uh, make them uh, operate only in French. The whole point is that uh, Quebec birth rate fell down a lot. It fell down to zero when I first arrived here in 1985 and it was at zero for a lot, long time. And then the government had to give incentives was providing either $3,000 per child per year. And so that started boosting up the birth rate. But let's face it, a lot of the immigrant populations are having children. And uh, what that happens is that- more focus on integration at, rather yes. than multiculturalism, I see. Well, and there's a reason- to bring to an end of this interview now. Thank you so much, Sister Farida, for joining us today. Uh, it was great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. You are watching Canadian Muslim News on Muslim Network TV. That's it from our Toronto studios tonight. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more Canadian Muslim content. Stay safe and until next time.